In this video, I will attempt to describe a technique for producing volume caustic effects in 3DS Max. And this video illustrates volume caustics where we have a light shining from above passing through a transparent uh, surface, also animated, uh, such as the surface of water, and then the visible light rays that occur in the volume beneath that surface are referred to as volume caustics. This is in addition to the effect of or the effect of uh, refractive caustic shown on the bottom surface here and reflective caustic shown on this uh, uh, rear surface. So what we'll do is build this scene up from scratch to illustrate uh, volume caustics. The geometry that we'll reuse in the scene is uh, very simple. It's simply four planes and I've gone ahead and constructed them here uh, to save a little time. We have uh, this surface here, 100 units on each side, which will be the water surface, and this also has 100 subdivisions on each side, fairly dense, so we can uh, make the, animate the surface. We have a bottom plane here, which will receive the refractive caustics, and a plane uh, on the side here, which will receive uh, reflected caustics. In addition, there is a plane uh, behind the, uh, these uh, three planes that is a background which is absolutely essential for producing volume caustic effects. And we'll talk about that later uh, in the um, video. And for the time being, we'll just go ahead and hide it. Next, we want to uh, deform this uh, surface that will become the water surface. So select it, and in the modifier panel, uh, apply a displace uh, modifier. And in the map section, click on none and load a smoke uh, map. You can turn up the strength to get a deformation here. So let's try 15. And that seems to produce a, an effect. We'll accept that as OK. All right. The first thing we'll do is set up for mental ray rendering. So go to Render Setups. In the Common tab, scroll down to the bottom and select the Mental Ray Renderer. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to go over to Global Illumination, the Global Illumination tab, and uh, scroll down to the section where Caustics is, Caustics and um, Photon Mapping, and check the box here where it says Enable Caustics. So Enable Caustics. And then the third thing we need to do is go over to the Render tab, and if you go down here, there is a, um, a little checkbox here, Use Auto Volume. Make sure this is checked on. And uh, it can be very frustrating to set up everything and volume caustics doesn't work uh, because you don't have this particular uh, check uh, box under Use Auto Volume. Absolutely necessary to produce volume caustic effects. Now let's create a light, so we'll go to uh, Create Lights, and we'll use a free direct light, place it in the scene, raise it up a little bit above the uh, what will be the water surface, and rotate it so that it shines a little towards the uh, vertical plane and we'll adjust a couple of the settings uh, we'll make it a uh, decay of inverse square and we'll set the 
intensity to 1.5 for right now. Now let's create a material for the water surface and this will be a arc and design material. Uh, <clears throat> scroll down to the bottom of the rollout. Open up the mental race section. And in here we're going to put uh, two shaders uh, in the photon volume. Click on none and we'll put in a party volume photon shader. And while we're here we'll <coughs> set the extinction, increase that a little bit to uh, 0.01. And the scatter is pretty much, uh, has very little effect on, on the uh, volume caustics so we'll just leave it there and then go up a level and on this other slot we're going to in the uh, photon section we will insert a um, photon basic shader and in here we will set the diffuse to black and uh, We'll set the specular to sort of a lightish blue green. Uh, this, this should be about right. And for the transparency, we will make the uh, membrane or the surface uh, fully transparent. Alright, that takes care of this material. And uh, then we can just assign it to the uh, membrane surface. Next, let's uh, get ready to do a test render. And let's make a little uh, adjustment here in the render settings. Go to render settings, um, global illumination. And scroll back down to the, uh, where the enable caustic section. And here is right in here, and go down towards the bottom of that. And let's change the average coat, uh, number of caustic photons to 1 million. So this should give us a, a decent render. And uh, next, let's uh, render and see what we get. And you can see here that we're getting caustic effects, particularly uh, the refractive caustics. Uh, not so much the reflective caustics, or at least they're not easy to see. As you see, we're getting no volume caustics at all. So let's make some further adjustments and see uh, what we can get. I'll make a clone of this um, render. There it is. And we need to unhide that uh, background uh, object that we had mentioned earlier. So this background here is very important. And we need to uh, set up a material for it. And so go back to the uh, material editor. And uh, we're going to use, again, another arc and design material. And once again, scroll down to the bottom of the uh, rollout. And uh, open the mental race section. And then where it says extended shaders, we uh, volume extended shaders we need to put in a another shader and we're going to use a party volume party volume shader and uh, we'll <coughs> go ahead and make some adjustments here we'll set the scatter uh, to point um, I think point zero four works or point zero zero four And we'll set the extinction, or leave the extinction at 0 
and then we will assign that shader to this uh, background object. And now we can do another render. And I'll pause here while this is going on. So now the render is finished and you can see now we get this striking uh, effect here of these uh, visible light rays in the volume uh, beneath uh, beneath that water surface. Uh, so this is a side-by-side -side comparison showing the uh, caustic effects uh, without the background shader versus the volume caustic effects you get in addition with using the uh, party volume shader on that background uh, object. So that background object is absolutely essential. Now you also notice that the membrane doesn't look, or the surface doesn't look transparent. And this means that these shaders that we've applied are actually controlling the properties uh, of, in terms of light transmission of that water surface. But uh, we can uh, change the look of the water surface by going back to the material editor and in the, in the material for the water surface um, load a template so select the template that look, would look clear so something like uh, glass physics and then if you do a uh, another render You should see that the membrane surface is transparent. I'll pause here. So here the render is done, and you can see that now you have a transparent appearing surface. So that template that you uh, load actually only has an effect on the appearance of the surface, not on the transmission. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching.